Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John and I are going to probably talk about something important if we can think of anything to talk about. Help me out here, would you? A little bit, John. Help me a little bit. It must be something important to talk about. I know what we can talk about, Art. We can talk about cars, and I'll tell you why. Uh, there's a lot of seniors our age, younger, older, who have to buy a new car. Now, we bought a new car, I don't know, 10 years ago. It's in great shape, and uh, we're going to keep it until, I don't know, another 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've got a car that's close to 20 years old, and I have the same attitude. I'm going to keep it until it goes. It, you know, I don't, I don't put money into it except to keep it running. So, for instance, it's got a lot of dents. The paint's chipped. The upholstery is not that great. But, boy, it runs great, and I can't see it ever dying. I, of course, it will. Um, its technology is old and it's a little cheaper to fix, quite frankly, than some of the new technology. But, you know, if you keep it in good shape, if it's a good manufacturer, keep the car in good shape. Quite frankly, there are cars that can run 20 years these days. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, so uh, uh, your other car is the one that your wife has, you talked about, the, the newer one, if you will. And yeah. Linda has a car that's 12, 13, 14 years old. It's, it's, Maybe it's 15 years old, whatever it is. Um, but it only has 50,000 miles on it because she bought it uh, about a year or so before she retired. And so right. in a lot of ways, it's like a brand new car. We, we change the oil sure. regularly. And the only major repair we've had on it uh, in 15, 16 years, whatever it is, is a year and a half ago, uh, the compressor went. So the air conditioning uh, wasn't working and it was just impossible. She says, well, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's worked a little bit. So I, I spent maybe 600 bucks. We have a great mechanic here locally. And uh, it's been just absolutely great ever since. So, but she maybe does 300 miles a month now. So, I mean, yeah. she's really limited. Uh, and then I, uh, I had a car, uh, my Honda Pilot, which I loved. Uh, I actually bought that um, uh, as a second owner and got it up to, for, I think I got it about 20,000 miles and got to 150,000 miles. And then things started happening with it. I maintained it, but things started happening with it. So finally the transmission went and they were able to cobble it back together. I was able to, uh, uh, during the, uh, the time when they were spending tons of money to buy used cars, I got a great, yeah. great buy from CarMax, which actually bought it for parts. Uh, they said that they'll probably, well, no, they, they, the, car, the car was worth more uh, being, I think it was 10 or 12 years old at the time. It was worth more for yeah. parts than it would be to, to spiffy it up and resell it. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, I, I'm sure they did that. And then what I did was yeah, I yeah. wanted a car with a long-term uh, warranty on it. And I was looking at uh, uh, Hyundai Santa Fe's and to buy from Avis or one of the uh, enterprise and they had really yeah. good prices, but I couldn't have the 10 year warranty because I wasn't the original owner. So as it turns out, I went to Hyundai and they gave me a real good deal on a, a lease and the it was just a different kind of financing. And um, you have 10 year, I'm the original owner. After three years, I can turn it back in. I can continue leasing it and pay down the buyout or I can buy it out. And my initial plan was that I'm going to buy it out. And quite frankly, I've owned it almost two years. I don't think I have 20,000 miles on it because of the pandemic. So that happened to work out. Now I have a brother-in-law who has always done very well, and but he keeps a car for 10 years, but he leases it, he leases it and then he buys it out. So- See, now I, I'm, first of all, there's a lot of people that when they retire do just what mm -hmm. I, Penny did and Linda did. And that's it, you buy your last, think you're buying your last new car, mm -hmm. right? I'm retiring, I'm going to be 65 or whatever the age is, and I'm going to buy this car. It's a good car. I'm going to take great care of it. And it's going to last me forever. Well, the reality is we're all living forever. <laughs> and our car well, certainly, certainly I am. We know that. We've determined that. Yeah. 
I'm going to live you, uh, at course, least another 25 different. years because I have a, a rolling plan. Uh, well, that's that's because you're you. Mm. <laughs> But I think most of us, somewhere into our retirement, you're going to buy a new car sooner or later. Yeah, I, and for no other reason than particularly when, when we were kids, in our, even in our 20s and 30s, you could actually fix a car. You know, you could do a couple yeah. of things yourself. But now you have to bring it in for three hundred dollars just to see if the windshield wiper needs replacing. I well, mean, they got to plug it into the computer, right. don't they? Uh, and so, and so one of the reasons why it. I think people who are uh, into the seventies and eighties from time to time will buy a car, where you say, "Well, why are they doing that?" Because you look at the actual t actual railroad tables. But if they can afford it at all, they want something that's reliable, particularly if right. uh, they are still uh, uh, working. They don't want to yeah. wake up in the morning and have it not start. So the first three or four years, the car is probably going to be reliable. After that, then it's you have to maintain it. But uh, uh, if you don't want it to rattle and this and yeah, that, yeah, I think I think you're right. I, I, you know, it's an odd um, um, juxtaposition, or uh, um, you know, it, it's it, an apparent contradiction that uh, we we would not need a new car because. What we we all do is we all want to be able to rely on it, even though we're not driving as much. Um, I think my mileage, particularly after COVID, my mileage is uh, half of right. less than half of what it was before COVID, and in retirement, my mileage was half of what it was before I was, you know, while I was working. Right. So, but we all need the the security. We need to know that that car is there. Right, and you uh, and I, and, you and, and I are a case where both of our uh, wives have cars, so that if something happened to ours, we could do something right. else. But there, there are a lot of people. There's a one car family. Okay, that's true, and that, that's really important for them. But you know, when you're a senior, here's and and, and I think this is an important discussion because um, I and it sounds like Linda thinks the way I do, and then you uh, have a different attitude. If you're going to have to buy a new car uh, when you're retired, my attitude is buy a car and make it last another 20 years. And once it's paid for, I don't have any. I I want to get rid of the payments. Right. But you went into a lease. And right, but a my lease plan, is, my plan at the end of the a lease, lease is a, by its definition, you're paying. It's just a different way of financing. At the end of the lease, you're going to pay more. When we fit, no, when we figure, when we figure it out, as long as I don't go over the mileage, which I'm way under the mileage because of COVID for no other reason, is that my with all the payments that I've made for three years, and the yeah. buyout that's fixed, I know what it is after three years. I pay about the same as if I had paid cash for the car. And put it on a, a home equity line that was at that point down at one and a half to two percent. So yeah. uh, it was just it happened to be an accident of financing. Uh, my brother-in-law has uh, used to own all his cars, and he's been leasing the last two or three times around. Uh, and he he keeps a car for uh, uh, seven, ten years. Uh, the, the same as. Most of my cars have been that way. On the lease, he keeps a car. Not on, on the, the lease. lease. He yeah. buys it. He, eventually, he'll buy it out. Okay, yeah. uh, it's just a different way of financing. You can't lease really? it forever. You have at some point they have to turn it over because otherwise, if the resale value goes down, it doesn't it right. it doesn't hold any value to right. the uh, uh, the leasing company. So well, I'm not an expert on it, but my plan is to buy it out, and that's why I got the Santa Fe because Hyundai has a standard ten year, hundred thousand mile warranty on the powertrain and seven years on all the electronic gizmos that are in there. Okay, and those are really, really yeah, so expensive. Yeah, so you were again, you were as a senior, you were buying for security, the the uh, the the, the uh, repair. Right, but if I didn't, uh, if I didn't have that big repair bill on my ten, twelve year old Honda uh, Honda Pilot, I probably would still be driving it today. I'm, you know, like you, but I was forced to have to get something more reliable and rather than buy another used car. Okay, yeah. and pay extra money for uh, a factory certification so that I get some additional warranty out of it. Uh, I just went with a company that had a great reputation for that particular series of cars. Uh, they yeah. come up with a new model, which I understand is not as reliable. But you know, it's uh, I just don't. All I know is that when I 
ran the numbers, it was a little bit of my advantage. And I thought I'd have some advantage with the dealer as well by having a car under their lease. I'm probably wrong about that. It's just numbers. Uh, yeah, but that's interesting because traditionally, uh, leasing was for people in business that right. they could write the lease off as a business expense right. on taxes, whereas it's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah, you depreciate and it may be a little bit expenses. more difficult and things like that. Yeah, but but a lease was a lot a lot cleaner. Nobody ever argued with you. Right, correct. Writing off the, the lease is a business expense. But here we are retired. We don't have business expenses. Or if we do, they're completely right. different. Much, much, much lower, sure. Category, yeah. And and yet you got a deal that was what? Almost equal, you say, yeah. to to the deal you would have gotten if they bought it outright. Right. And as it turns out with the with the inflation and everything else, I can probably buy out my car and resell it immediately and make maybe five or eight thousand dollars. Sure. Well, you're right. In the meantime. Used cars have gone out of sight. Right. You can't try to get. Uh, for years, we were buying used cars um, because they were always a better deal. Yep. You know, and you could buy a warranty if you wanted to fill in the gaps. Buy a two-year-old used car, you were much better off. Not anymore. So, so do you think that by this time we've thoroughly confused people? Uh, most people don't buy new cars, <laughs> and we're just we're just we're just well i i beg to differ because are we, blo are we bloviating I, a lot of a lot of seniors buy old cars yeah. we we people with gray hair are a really important market for the auto industry right seriously um in fact i noticed i think it was buick i noticed a buick ad now i had thought buick went out of business years ago General Motors. Yeah, they should have dumped the down. Buick and kept the Oldsmobile. I love the Oldsmobiles. I loved. Yeah, and now the Buick ads are all featuring people with gray hair. Right. But so, then also, I saw one was a soccer mom who uh, did. All those kids fit in that vehicle. How did you do that? Yeah. So they they yeah. gone for both ends of it. Well, they listen. They want to sell cars. Sure. You know, but uh, uh, it's fascinating. So we are going to, you know, we're living into our 90s, our, our generation. Yep. Um, most of us, not everybody. I, we wish everybody does. And quite frankly, a lot of us are driving in our 90s, mm. you know, 80s and 90s. So and there's a lot of people that were wishing that we, that that we didn't. On. There are a lot of people who are wishing that we didn't. Well, Hopefully we're all going to be responsible. Right. But anyway, uh, cars are, are a fascinating thing and uh, a necessity of life these days. But I, you know, and, and speaking about cars, we, we could extend this forever. You are a big car guy. Uh, you did. A, I am Mr. Car Guy. Yeah. I mean, you you produced uh, uh, many races. I and you, I you, love I, I love you know what I love cars, but I've never been. A very good mechanic. Mm, really, all the cars, all the cars that I've owned that I've worked on, believe me, didn't last, I didn't they didn't last twenty years. You brought it I to a mechanic. I fixed them down. I didn't fix them up, <laughs> and I had, and I never had the money to really make them sharp. You know, I never, never had the money to do a good paint job. Never had the money to get a better manner. You mean to make them go make like this down the street? On uh, what do they call that? Uh, the hip hoppers. Yeah, the hip hoppers. Yeah, the, you would have done the hip hoppers. The low riders. The yeah, low riders. You, you would have done that. I, I couldn't afford that either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably, had, probably couldn't afford it. I had. Uh, I think I counted up. I had. I, I owned twenty cars before I was twenty-one. Wow. And I think that kind of tells you what kind of condition they were in. You know. Well, I and, guess you know. You know, um, it's a habit. We've had some conversations with uh, some of our regular uh, contributors about habits. So maybe you need to get a book and maybe break that habit a little bit. But you're not going to have 20 cars between now and the next 10 years. Well, you know what, Art? Maybe I need to go into motorcycles now. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Or <laughs> skydiving. That could cure a lot yeah, of problems. Anyway, listen. The important thing is I'm glad to hear that you uh, you broke even, if you will. On the uh, on the lease versus the purchase. Yeah, I knew that going uh, into it, and it just it made it easy. Yeah. yeah, I think the lesson is that you gotta you gotta run the numbers. You gotta do right. the comparison. 
one might be better deal than the other. They might be the same. Yep. Things are changing. Okay. Well, now now we've made our, our audience so smart, they may take the next week off to go shop for a new slash a reliable used car. Good luck. Okay. So last, last question is how far away are you from a new car? I don't know. Uh, I think right now my plan is I've got another 12, about 14 months, almost 14 months on this three-year lease. And my original plan was to buy it out. And at the time that that happens, I'll take a look at it all. Um, uh, I'm happy not to have a payment. And so uh, I've actually been putting some money aside so that when the last ten thousand dollars comes up as a as an option, I may just buy it out. It depends on what the interest yeah. rates are at the time. If the stock market keeps going the way it is right now, I use the cash to buy it out. Because yeah. I'm not getting any return on the stock market right now. So th those are different decisions. So yeah. I've got uh so this car may be not my forever car because remember I've got a twenty five year rolling plan. So I'll right. probably even if I keep this car ten years till the end of the hundred thousand mile warranty, uh, you know, maybe I'll get another one at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I might need a new car any day, but I don't think so. I, it seems to be going strong and I'll get a new car when I have to. And then I'll look at, even though Good the prices use. of used cars are out of sight now, I'll look at getting a used car. Yeah. Um, and um, a really old used car. Cause I'm I, right now I'm, fascinated by having or at least the idea of having an old hot rod so yeah. maybe i would maybe that's my uh my retirement toy is to get in a right 32 coupe with a v8 mm. engine wow we'll see yeah and all electric too right? well you want you're gonna have gasoline you're gonna keep gasoline till till you're done with this this turn oh, yeah. around the sun Oh, absolutely. That's another conversation for another day. Does solar, uh, or does electric EVs, uh, maybe a year or two from now, we should have a conversation when EVs are even more prevalent than they are now, charging stations and all that stuff. I'm still not sold for me. I, I'm not I'm not either. I, they're, you know, my son-in-law has one. Uh, they love it. It's a nice car. Um, but if you're looking into the future, you've got to ask yourself, how do they come up and solve the problems that they're facing? The EV, just the EV well, industry. Well, you, you need you need uh, uh, generators, uh, power yep. plants that create the electricity. And a lot of them are still yep. using coal and, and natural gas and other things. So, uh, and what does it cost to make a battery? I've never figured out is there really right. a net savings. Well, look, we know the technology moves it'll, at it'll a rapid there. pace, and you never know what they're going to come up with. But right now, looking out to the future, I don't think it's a good investment. I think it's a limited, got limited uh, usefulness. Yeah. All right. Well, mate, let's let's put it because you keep our schedule. Put it down for about yeah. a year from now. Uh, maybe we should look at maybe one day when you come up here, we have lunch. In San Clemente, where we, where okay. we meet halfway through, maybe we'll go. I'll come to, up in my EV. No, no, no. We'll go over to um, uh, uh, Rivian, the electric truck pickup truck. Oh, that's okay. right. Yeah. Uh, we'll yeah. Go well, listen, to, when 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 they make an EV that can run twenty years, last twenty years, like my little uh, Toyota, mm -hmm. then we'll talk about it. Well, the battery won't last twenty years. That's for sure. No, no I want, and that's. that's that's part of the problem. I'm looking for practical uh, uh, hydrogen production so that uh, I can have a uh, an automobile that does nothing but spit water out the rear end. Uh, they uh, have them now, now. They have them, but they're uh, in limited supply. Now, hydrogen, I, forgive me, I, did, I failed chemistry, but, so this may sound dumb, but hydrogen running a car, is that the same stuff you put in a balloon? Can I end up like this? Can no. I they actually they have a different voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> they float. All right, listen, Art and everybody, um, stay safe in your car. That's the important thing. And have a great week. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.